I've been soaking the spokes, the top of the basket, for probably about five minutes in some warm water. And now we're ready to tuck them over and down into the basket. The spokes that will be tucked over are these spokes where they are on the outside of that top row of weaving. So it's every other spoke. And I'm simply going to go around, make sure the top row is tight. I'm gonna crease this spoke down as tightly as I can against that top row. So make sure the top row is pushed downward and crease the spoke. And I go around the entire basket and every spoke that needs to be creased, I'll do so. When we come to the overlap of that top row, we have two spokes that are on the inside and they'll just remain there. The next spoke that will be tucked is this one. Continue that all the way around. And that's a little cracky there. Maybe a bit of a, a split. We can sand that off later. All of this tucking, creasing area will be covered up by the rim filler. And again, this top row is going to be covered inside and out by the rims. Once every one of the stakes has been creased over, we want to mark where they need to be cut in order to tuck them on the inside. So let's look at the inside of the basket. This is one of the spokes that will be tucked to the inside and I want to tuck it over this wide rim row and under two rows of weaving. So the first thing I need to do is mark it so I know the length that it needs to be. So I've marked that at the bottom of that second row. And I'll go around and mark every spoke in that fashion. Once all the spokes are marked, I'm going to go around and trim them. And I usually trim all of them around the basket. And then I go back and tuck them. So I can use this packing tool to pull out the two rows and roll the spoke down in. If you have a little bit of fraying, you can trim that off after you've tucked. And the spokes that are in between the tucked spokes, they simply get cut off. And you want to cut them off as flush to the top edge of the basket as you can. And continue this all the way around the top of the basket. 
The handle for the apple basket is a 12 inch white oak swing handle handcrafted in our shop in Allen County, Kentucky. You have the handle and ears and the ears have notches here for the inside and outside rims to fit in. The legs of the ears will be slipped down along the side of the basket. So your next job is to figure out where you want to attach the handle to the basket, what spokes you want these legs to fit upon. We want to choose the spokes uh, to mount the handle on either side and if I can I like to choose a spoke that has been cut off flush at the top. There's just a little less bulk there and with the profile of the ear you have a lot of thickness in this area. So I simply slip this over the basket, follow that spoke across the bottom and up the other side slip it in on this side and I want to check how the handle lays around the side of the basket if it lays right on the rim or just outside the rim and when I flip it I'd like to have that same distance on the opposite side and if that doesn't suit me I will just scoop this on around and make another test run and once I'm happy with the position of the handle I'd like to take my pencil and give myself a little mark on those spokes that I've chosen. A little check mark, a little smiley face on both sides. So let's take a look at the profile of the ear. You see that it's thick here where the notch is and then tapers down. So it's this tapered end that we want to work behind a few rows of weaving and we have to put it behind weaving on the outside of the basket as well as on the inside. So again I'll just temporarily slip it over. When the handle's finally in place the lower edge of the notch here would be level with the bottom of this top rim row and as I look down the side of the ear I see that I will probably begin pushing the ear under the weaver let's say here again it's away from the thickness part of the ear here so if I count down one two three four five weavers down and I'll just start on the outside raise the weaver and slip a quarter of an inch worth under. Now I need to turn to the inside and I'll pinch this leg together and slip underneath one row on the inside. If the basket is good and dry on the sides these ears slip into place a lot more easily. Again, one move on the outside and one on the inside. Sometimes I can get it right in place or reach through from the outside. back it out just a bit. There's an overlap there on my weaver so that makes my job a little bit tougher. And push it right into place. So now this side is in place and I'll do the same on the opposite side. Go ahead and soak your inside rim and outside rim and rim filler in some warm water for about 10 minutes and while you're doing that, let's measure around the top row and find the circumference of your basket. So whatever the circumference, you're going to add some length to that for each of your rim pieces. The outside rim is going to be cut four to six inches longer than your circumference and I've already marked these. The 
the inside rim, which is flat oval, is cut about an inch or so shorter than the overall length of the outside rim. And the rim filler, which is number six round, is cut to the same length as that inside rim. And these have already been soaked. Each one of these pieces, you want to get rid of some of the stiffness by working them down their length. You can just work the pieces down and back to loosen them up a bit. They're just going to fit more easily around the top of your basket, cooperate a little bit better if you can get some of the stiffness out. If your pieces are really stiff, you might have to soak them just a little bit longer. And just temporary, temporarily clip that together. The inside rim piece will need to be worked a little bit more. This is made from your guide that you made earlier to help you size your basket. It's turned with the flat side out. I usually just work it a little bit more. And the outside piece is half inch, half round and takes a little bit more working to get the stiffness out of it. It's a heavier weight material than the half inch flat oval inside rim. So we just want to work it down and back, warm it up a little bit, get some of the stiffness out of it. And I would just continue to work this outside rim until it'll lay in a, a nice circle for us. And with this piece, as you see, the flat side is to the inside. And our next step is to pin the inside and outside rim around the top of the basket and determine the length where the overlap or the join of these two ends is going to be. To begin with, I want to start in the center. I've got about equal length of rim to either side and I don't care where on the basket I start this. Once I scarf the rims and put them back on the basket for the final time, I do care where the scarf joint is, but for now, I don't. At the same time, I'm going to find the center of the inside rim, place it right here. And about every three or four fingers worth, I'm going to pin the rims as tight up against the side of the basket as I can, working all the way around. You can see a little bit of space here around the ears and that's just because of the, the profile of the ear where the notches are, just the nature of this basket. Now I'll go back to center and work myself around in the opposite direction. Use lots of clothes pins. This just assures a really nice tight fit of your rims around the top of the basket. And let me show you how the rim just slips right into the notch, both the inside and the outside. And we come on around to the overlap. And I'm just going to check the length of the overlaps. The outside rim overlap 
looks like it's about five inches or so. You can check and see. Yeah. So you could do about a four to, to five inch overlap is good. I think I'll leave it that long. It could be a bit shorter. The inside rim is really longer than it needs to be. So at this point, I'm just going to cut it back so that it's about four and a half to five inches. And now I'm ready to mark both ends of both rims to indicate where they overlap. The first mark is pretty easy to make. It's going to be right here at the edge And I'll be carving away from that pencil mark down, carving away on the rounded side of this end of the rim. And next we'll mark the flat side of the opposite end. And in the same manner, we'll be carving away the flat side of this end of the rim and you want to mark your inside rim the same way. The rounded side of one end and the flat side of the other. Now we'll take these rims off, set them aside, And we'll pin the rim filler around. The rim filler goes through the ears. It rides right up on the top edge of the basket. Again, we'll start in the center. And just about every three or four fingers width. pin this around. I like a much shorter overlap on the rim filler, just a couple of inches. So I'll trim this back to about a two inch overlap. And when I mark the overlap, I want to mark it so that the filler overlaps one piece on top of the other piece, as opposed to one piece in front and one piece behind. I want to mark it on top. And I think maybe that's a little bit longer than it needs to be. Trim it back a bit more. Okay. So I put a mark on the top side where that end is and on the bottom side of the opposite end. And I'll remove this filler and our next step is going to be to carve these overlapped areas on the outside rim, the inside rim, and the rim filler. And for that we'll be using a, a hand plane.